Note, we thank you for continuing the journeys of Edward and Celine. Please look for updates as we post them. There is so much more from our network of paranoid scientists. Now on with the fourth part of I'm a physicist at CERN. We've done something we shouldn't have. For fuck's sake Edward, run faster. Celine screamed at me with all her might as she kept the lead position. We ran down the corridor that she was looking into prior to our friends paying us a visit. I, can't, I'm, trying. I was panting heavily, and failing to keep up, but the thought of being gunned down by heavily armed Swiss militia imbued me with enough fear to haul my ex-smoker's ass up the third staircase we had found ourselves in since we commenced our escape, round two. Celine finally came to a sudden stop. She had found where we were supposedly headed and she waited for me to catch up. As I ran up behind her, I could see that she was starting to cry. Edward, regardless of what happens to us, you have to promise me that you are going to try and make it back to the collider room. She turned slowly, revealing her perfectly beautiful face. Her eyes had always captivated me, and even in this darkened hallway, I could still make out their astral quality. Celine's beauty betrayed how absurdly intelligent she was. Far and away the most intelligent member of the team, and definitely in line to become father. It wasn't a surprise to me that she would have been chosen by mother and father to conduct the first clandestine experiment. Magna cum laude from MIT with a Ph.D. in particle physics, by the time she was 24. Intelligence didn't describe Celine's mind, she was one with the science. Why? Won't they be waiting for us to go back there? I asked with great suspicion. Was she trying to set me up? Nothing that she had told me over the past few minutes had been known to me, she had slammed me with a series of revelations that I couldn't decide whether or not to trust her. Just trust me Edward, she snapped back at me, her patience wearing thin, and her worry hitting an all-time high. Regardless of what happens, promise me you'll go back there. I promise, I weakly responded. As the words left my mouth, the sound of heavy footsteps started to emanate from the stairwell we had just left. Run, Celine. I ordered, and she complied. My legs seemed to find new energy, boosted by the sound of our potential killers encroaching on us. I sprinted with such grace that Usain Bolt would have asked me for tips about form and foot placement. Celine quickly overtook me so much for the bolt being jealous. We found ourselves running down what seemed like an impossibly long corridor, a door was visible at the end. As we ran towards the door and threw ourselves out, we found ourselves running through the snow. We had left section A and were headed to K. The door had let us out behind the building and we could hear the faint sound of the soldiers who had been eagerly looking for us. We continued running and as always I followed Celine. Follow me we have to find Hugo. Hugo was the security guard that had alerted mother on the phone that Celine had contacted the authorities. He was the last person who I wanted to see right now. I stopped running and yelled at Celine, why the fuck would you want to see him? She stopped and turned towards me. Because I never made the call to the authorities Edward. She too had stopped running. As we stood in the cold, night air, I found my mind swimming with disbelief. What do you mean you never made the call? I asked her. I'll explain, let's just get out of sight and into the guard area. Hopefully Hugo believes me. Celine explained. And what happens if he doesn't, I extended my hand and reached for hers, Celine, we could be running directly into the maw of hell. If they capture us, they will experiment on us, they will kill us. There is no doubting that. The grave tone in my voice communicated both my fear and concern to Celine. Edward, we're running from the Swiss Army. Let the absurdity of that sentence sink in on you, and then tell me if you know of any other potential friends who could help us out, Celine calmly responded. 
She was right, we were completely alone, and we had to turn to anyone who could potentially help us. Celine and I held hands and continued to run towards the security area where the guards were typically stationed. As we rounded the corner, we could see that there were three members of the Swiss forces which had come to get us, talking to two of the guards who were on duty. One of the guards was a tall, rather handsome man with sharp Germanic features. The other was Hugo. We have to get his attention without attracting the others, whispered Celine, and we have to do it now, before our gun-toting friends start looking over here. I was plumb out of ideas, but knew that Celine would have a trick or two up her sleeve. I'm going to whistle. She turned and looked at me as she continued to explain the plan. We were both hugging the wall which offered us some shelter and protection. Whistle. What the fuck, that'll get their attention for sure. I exclaimed, realizing that getting their attention probably meant being gunned down or tossed and subdued at best. What had my life become, being tossed was the best thing I could hope for. Hugo and I dated for a few weeks, we didn't click, but we watched close encounters of the third kind on our first date, I'm going to whistle the tone, and hopefully he gets the hint. She explained. That's the great idea. Won't they realize that someone's clearly trying to get attention if we do that? I exclaimed at her, my voice never rising about a barely audible whisper. You have any great ideas, she snapped back at me. I could see that she was running out of options and this was a last-ditch attempt. Okay, here goes, she said. She turned the corner of the wall we were hiding behind and whistled this tone. As soon as she had finished, she whipped around the wall and threw herself to the ground next to me. We both crouched down, and kept an eye on the guard hut. What was that? One of the Swiss soldiers barked, was that whistling. He had turned towards Hugo at this point, and clearly demanded answers. The idea must have been communicated to Hugo since from our vantage point we could see him, the other guard and the Swiss soldiers having a heated debate. After a few seconds of arguing, we could see the other guard and the soldiers leave the guard hut. Celine squeezed my hand without taking her eyes off of our would-be killers. Come on Hugo, come on, she whispered. It was minus ten but her palms were still sweating, and so were mine. Come on, come on. The other guard led the soldiers in the direction opposite to where we were hiding. Fuck yes. Celine quietly celebrated our seeming victory. Now all we needed was Hugo to head in our direction. What is he doing? She asked, as her and I both saw Hugo pick up the phone and make a call. A few seconds later he hung up and began to walk in our direction. He now started to whistle the tone, and Celine whistled back. He rounded the corner and found her and I in the snow, without our jackets, both looking worse for wear. What are you doing? Come with me to the guard hut, you can warm up there. We had no place to run, and were rapidly exhausting all of our ideas for escape, we now solely relied on the kindness of a man that Celine felt unfit to date. I could feel my hope shrinking. I realized that it wasn't you that called the authorities after I made the call to father, Hugo said as he handed Celine the lid of his thermos, the makeshift cup filled with what smelled like chamomile tea, and a shit ton of whiskey. What? How could you know that? Celine asked as she took a wincing sip from the lid and handed it in my direction. You would never disclose that information to anyone. You would never call me and alert me about a classified experiment. That's not like you. I know stuff didn't work out between the two of us, but you have to give me more credit than that. I got to know the kind of person you were. Yeah, it's not very much, but you're just so, kind. I could never see you betraying your ethics like that. He was blushing as he finished explaining his line of reasoning. Celine threw her arms around Hugo and kissed him on the cheek. Thank you Hugo. Thank you, thank you thank you. I hadn't seen her this happy for a while, and even I wanted to kiss Hugo at that point. He would potentially be our ticket out of here. Who did you call? Celine asked him realizing that we needed to address who knew we were here. Who did you call Hugo? I called my sister, I told her to come to the facility. 
he explained. It was about 5 a.m. at this point, and Hugo's sister lived in Geneva, about 20 minutes drive away from CERN. If anyone can help you escape, she can. I'll get you to her car and the guards will let you out the main entrance. Hugo must have definitely cared for Celine if he was willing to risk his sister's safety to make sure we were okay. If they catch you, it's over. I heard them explaining that they needed to apprehend you at all costs, he continued. We have to get back to the collider, Celine interrupted. Hugo's face drained of color. He realized that her ask was almost completely improbable and would put him at even greater risk. Why the fuck would you want to? That place is swarming with military men, you wouldn't stand a chance. Hugo lost his cool and yelled at her, I have already made arrangements for you to leave. He locked eyes with Celine as he said this. Get us back there Hugo, or at least tell me how to, I'm not leaving soon. Celine retorted, her face frozen in a rictus of intent. No way, I'm not going with you, Hugo shot back frustratedly. Then tell us how to get there, Celine calmly placed her hand on his and looked him directly in the face. After a few seconds of pause, Hugo released a heavy sigh, if you take this access card, you can use the underground access tunnel to get you back into the building and then use the escape ladder to climb up into the collider room. It was built in so that anyone could escape if the collider became unstable. I doubt they ever thought that someone would want to break in. Hugo finished as he handed Celine the access card. Whose is it? She asked looking down at the tattered card with the cracked screen. It was Mother's, he said, looking at the floor. What do you mean was? What's happened to Mother? Celine asked as her voice broke. We both suspected the worse, but did not want to hear the outcome. Celine, Edward, run. They'll be back soon, look here. Hugo gestured to the display panel that stood behind him. We could see the faint tracker symbol of the guard that had escorted the soldiers heading back to the guard hut. You have to go now, he ordered as he pressed the card into Celine's hand. Thank you, I never saw you, I stole this, we never met tonight, Celine said in an attempt to allay Hugo's fears. We ran out of the guard hut, and back towards Section A. As we entered the side of the building that we had just left, Celine picked up her pace and began running in the direction of the access tunnel that Hugo had described. Here we go again. As I followed her through the maze of corridors, tunnels and hallways, I couldn't help but be mesmerized by the fact that no one had stumbled onto us. Not a single person had seen us over the past hour as we ran through the most important scientific facility in all of Europe. The first panel proved to be easy enough to open. One swipe of the access card and the door swung open with the greatest of ease. Poor mother what had they done to him? What had they done to father? I couldn't see Nevga giving up without a fight. And the rest of the family? Fuck. We made our way through the access tunnel and finally approached the ladder that Hugo described. It was made of wrought iron and led up to what appeared to be a manhole cover. Celine ascended the ladder and called down to me. Come up directly behind me, as soon as I open the door, I'll survey the room, and we can make our entrance. Celine, wait, tell me who made that call. If it wasn't you who was it? I asked, feeling that this was the last chance I had to get some answers. She looked down at me and was clearly crying. Just make sure that you remember that I didn't make the call. She said as she opened the hatch at the top of the ladder. Suddenly the immense white light burst into the chamber that we were in, and I could feel myself lose my grip on the ladder and begin to fall. I hit the ground with a heavy thud, and the light began to die down. My first thought was that Celine had closed the hatch. I quickly realized how wrong I was. As my vision cleared, I realized that the light was dying down, and I could see figures hunched over me. I scrambled to sit up and began to scoot away from the figures. The light finally subsided and I realized I was in control room with mother, father, Nevka, and the others lying around me. He's back. Tell us Edward what did you see? It was Nevka and she was full of questions. He's moving so much, 
father didn't move that much when she came back. Another member of the family exclaimed. I was panting heavily and couldn't make sense of what happened. Father approached me, Edward, you jumped when we ran the last collision, what did you see, she exclaimed. Where's, Celine, were the only words I could get out. The room filled with a silence, father looked down at me and said, Edward, Celine's jump was a failure. She jumped immediately after you, when we ran the collision to try and bring you back, and we haven't been able to bring her back yet. Keep the chain. Stay paranoid my friends.